So here's Unit 3, Circular Motion and Gravitation. Lesson A, Circular Motion, Video 1. So this lesson is going to take place in two different videos, Video 1 and Video 2, uh, both of which will cover these learning targets here. By the end of this unit, uh, students will understand that uniform circular motion is accelerated motion, objects rotate due to torques, and rigid objects remain static due to balanced forces and torques. So all of the motions that we've dealt with so far have been straight line motions. We haven't dealt with uh, objects changing direction during their travel. That type of motion is called angular motion, motion with changing direction. Uh, a special type of angular motion is circu uniform circular motion. So a uniform circular motion is angular motion with a constant speed. So in uniform circular motion, the speed will stay constant However, the direction changing constantly uh, gives it an acceleration because velocity is, in a, is a vector. Vectors have uh, both magnitude and direction. So if we change the direction, we change either magnitude or direction, then we're changing that, that velocity vector. We're getting an acceleration. So objects that have a circular motion are moving in a circular path around a central point, which is we call that an axis or a center of spin. If the axis is within the body, we say it's rotating. So rotating is like uh, if I sit in a chair and spin around, I'm rotating. The axis of spin is within that, that circularly moving body. If that axis of spin is outside the body, then we say it's revolving instead. Uh, that would be like if I tied to something to a, a string and, and started twirling it around. That would be a revolving so Earth uh, rotates around its axis, which causes day and night. And the Earth revolves around the sun, which causes the four seasons during the year. Now, an object that is undergoing circular motion has an angular velocity and undergoes an angular displacement. Angular velocity is the rate at which a particle's angular position is changing as it rotates around a circle. So in, an, in analogy with uniform linear motion, uniform circular motion is motion in which the angle increases at a constant rate. So a particle moves with uniform circular motion if and only if its angular velocity is constant. Angular displacement can be measured in several different units. We can uh, measure in revolutions per time, degrees per time, or radians per time. Those are the most common units. Where will we be using primarily revolutions per second as our standard unit for angular velocity? So here's angular velocity. This is the symbol for angular velocity. It's a lowercase Greek letter omega. Uh, so it's angular displacement over time. Now for linear motion we use the term speed when we're not concerned with the direction of motion and velocity when we are. For circular motion we define the angular speed to be the absolute value of that angular velocity. It's regardless of the particle's direction of rotation. And just like with linear speed and linear velocity, we use the, the symbol V to designate each. We're going to be using the omega to designate both angular, displace, angular velocity and angular speed. So when the direction of rotation is not important, we'll interpret omega to mean angular speed, a positive quantity. In kinematics equations, uh, omega is always the angular velocity, and we need to use a negative value for clockwise rotations. And then, of course, counterclockwise would be uh, used as a positive angular velocity. So we look at an example. A small steel ball rolls counterclockwise around the inside of a 30 centimeter diameter roulette wheel. The ball completes exactly two revolutions in 1.2 seconds. What's the ball's angular velocity? 1.67 revolutions per second. Okay, so here we are using uh, revolutions per second as our unit for angular velocity. And because we're told it's a counterclockwise rotation, uh, then this is a positive quantity. So now let's think about speed, velocity, and acceleration in uniform circular motion. If we have a, uh, an object going rotating, and we take two points on that object, 
one closer to the center of uh, spin and one to the outside. Both points make the same circle in the same amount of time, but this point on the outside uh, traces out a larger pathway than the inner point does. So it, it travels a greater distance in the same amount of time. That means it's got to be moving faster. So each point moves at two different speeds even though they have the same revolutions per time. So for something that's in a, in going in uniform circular motion, it's easy to relate a particle's period to its speed. So period we uh, is a capital T. A period is the time it takes for one revolution. So the, the linear speed or the linear velocity which is going to be the velocity that, that would be straight line motion if the thing was not changing direction, right? So linear velocity means the tangential velocity um, of that rotating object. So linear velocity is given to us as the, the circumference of the path over the period. So let's take a look at an example. Here the diameter of a compact a CD is 12 centimeters. When the disc is spinning at its maximum rate of 450 RPM, revolutions per minute, what is the speed of a point at the outer edge of the disc, 6 centimeters from the center, and at a point uh, 3 centimeters from the center? So this is asking about the speed or the linear speed of these two points here. Okay, So we need to use circumference over period in order to figure that out. Now both points have an angular velocity of 540 revolutions per minute so we have to use that to help us find our period. Okay, So we take 540 revolutions per minute we want to first uh, convert that to our standard units for angular velocity we get nine revolutions per second. Okay. So to figure our period, the time it takes for one revolution, we use our relationship of our, our angular velocity, and we say we've, we've got one revolution at nine revolutions per second, then it takes 0.11 seconds to make one revolution of that CD. So now we can find that linear velocity for each of those points, point A, and point B, and we can see that point A moves at a slower rate, slower linear velocity than point B because it uh, travels out a smaller pathway. So in this case to find our linear speed we first have to find our, our period and then apply that period to uh, our linear speed equation. So now let's think about acceleration in uniform circular motion. Although the speed of a particle in uniform circular motion is constant, its velocity is not constant because the direction of motion is always changing. This figure here is showing that there's an acceleration at every point in the motion with the acceleration vector pointing toward the center of the circle. And so we call this a centripetal acceleration. The word centripetal means center seeking. And centripetal acceleration depends on the speed and distance from the center of the circle. So for a point further from the center, the acceleration is going to be greater than for a point closer to the center. So, for example, we've got these folks here on a merry-go-round. Okay. So th this person experiences a lower speed and acceleration than this person out here which is further away from the center. So here's an example. In the Quasar Carnival ride, passengers travel in a horizontal 5 meter radius circle. For safe operation, the maximum sustained acceleration that riders may experience is 20 meters per second squared, about twice the acceleration of gravity. What is the period of the ride when it's being operated at the maximum acceleration. So this is one of those rides where say you, you 
you sit in a car out here and you travel in a circular path round and round. So we're looking for the period of this ride. So we're looking for the amount of time it takes to do one revolution. And we start with our acceleration, v squared over r. This is our centripetal acceleration, v squared over r. And what this is going to give us is our linear speed. Okay, so this would be the speed that, uh, the, the, you know, at any point in the circle, that tangential speed uh, of that object. The object being the car uh, going around in a circle. So our maximum acceleration is 20 meters per second squared. And our radius is 5 meters. Which gives us a linear speed of 10 meters per second. And since we know our linear speed is really the circumference over the period, we can apply that rule to find that period. And we would get 3.1 seconds. Okay, so that ends this video for uh, first video for lesson A on circular motion. And what we've really been looking at is kind of the kinematics of circular motion. Just like with linear motion, we started with kinematics and explaining just this is the motion and uh, describing what that motion does. Uh, we're doing the same thing with circular, uniform circular motion. Our next video, next part of lesson A, we'll look at the dynamics of uniform circular motion. So we'll be looking at the causes of uh, cir uniform circular motion and the forces involved. See you then.